face the future when your hope is in his God, I am a God who can do anything. Yes, I am a God who is still the King of Kings. I am a God oh, who is able to do above and beyond what you could ask Him to. God can do more than you could ever ask. Yes, I know. He will do it for you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to the second day of the Triumphant Power Global Crusade with Kumui. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and make manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. I welcome you to this day of your triumph in Jesus' name. God has always raised men to accomplish great tasks in every generation. And tonight, we have such a man in our midst, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui, that the Lord has raised up to bring eternal word of triumphant Christ to us. But before he comes to give us those wonderful words, it's my pleasure tonight to welcome our music minister, Cornelius Cross so that it can lead us in triumphant worship. God bless you. Welcome to the second day of the Triumphant Power Conference 2022. Let us enjoy the presence of the Most High God as we enter into his presence. Let us expect a move of God in this service. Thank you, Pastor Dr. Kumi, for inviting me to lead worship, and may God bless each of you during this conference. Amen. Put your hands together. Every praise belongs to our God. Whoa. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, every word of worship and one Glory, glory, hallelujah. 
We give you praise. We celebrate the most high God. Look at your neighbor and say to them, we're worshiping and praising the most high God. Amen.
the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we magnify your holy name in this place. Hallelujah. When we worship God, the Bible says we are to worship God in spirit and in truth. And we're asking you tonight that you would allow the Lord's presence and the song that God drops in your spirit, man, to flow from the inside. Let the praises rise from the inside. from the inside of, of you. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight on the inside, in the inside of me let praise sing it from the inside
Is that all you can do tonight? That's all you can do tonight. If you are as excited as I am excited here tonight, you will jam your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Christ. Amen. Listen. The louder and longer your amen is, the quicker it's for your miracle to come to you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the hour. America, North America, South America, China, Caribbean, Oceania, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Germany, Africa, all over the world. Be at attention now. Fasten your seatbelt because power is about to take off. Say amen. And now here is the center of the command and control headquarters where power is transmitted all over the world. And now listen, God Almighty tonight will do what you've not seen before. And that's why we are here. God has raised up a man to bring about the triumphant unlimited power experience in our lives tonight in Jesus name he has been assigned and appointed and approved by the Lord God to connect divinity with humanity and when that connection takes place power explodes why come tonight to the podium the defender of faith the patriarch of piety, the prince of the preachers, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumar. Praise the Lord. Happy, joyful, blessed people, praise the Lord. I welcome you to the second day of this triumphant power crusade, the GCK, and I pray that your presence today will be blessed of the Lord. Yeah. Heaven's face will shine upon you, yeah. and the power of the Lord will be manifested in such a way that your problems will receive a divine solution tonight in Jesus' name. What are you? 
Let heaven identify you there. Father, we thank you for this hour, for this moment. We thank you, Lord, because you are the God of all power, transforming power, triumphant power, translating power. And I pray that tonight, everyone will be connected with that power from heaven. Amen. That lives will turn around. Amen. Families reunited. Amen. And incurable diseases taken away from every life. Amen. And then the salvation of the soul, of the heart, of the man, of the woman, of the boy, of the girl. Salvation for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Take everyone higher than where they are now. Confirm your power in every life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can be seated. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 45. And I'm reading from verse 21. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 21. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, yes. Let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told each from that time? Am not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. Here God himself speaks to everyone. He speaks to you there today. And those of us online understand that Lord is speaking to you tonight. And he says... I am God, and there is none else with any other power, with a comparable power. It says there is none else with creative power, with redemptive power, with saving power, with healing power. It says there is none else, and it comes to you tonight to bless you. And you are blessed. Look at that, verse 21. It says in verse 21, Tell ye and bring them near. It says, we should tell you. He sends his prophet. He sends the proclaimer. He sends the herald. And he says, bring them near and tell them. They want salvation. Tell them that he is God. And is going to save. They want healing. Tell them that he is God. And is going to heal. Tell them they want deliverance. Tell them he is God. And is going to deliver. And then he says bring them near. That's what we are doing tonight. You will come nearer unto God. I said you will come nearer unto God. Whatever your challenge. Whatever your difficulty and whatever you are going through, solution has come tonight. Yeah. He'll wipe the tears of your face, wipe everything away. It will totally take your life. It will transform your life tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. He said, yeah, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? It tells us from ancient time he has declared. And because he has declared from ancient time, he says, the God that changes not. The God who was great, good, gracious, glorious in the past is still the same God today. He will do good in your life. It will transform that life. It will change that life. And then it says, from that ancient time, 
who has told it from that time. Have not I, the Lord, I told the children of Israel, I came to save them. Did it not happen? I took them through the wilderness. Did it not happen? I provided for all their needs. Did it not happen? I sent my son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and everything, everyone that came to him, they were saved. They were healed. They were delivered. And what God had said will happen, it said, tell them it had been of old time. Have not I the Lord done what I said? I will do then, he said, there is no God else beside me. There is no other God. There's no other power. There's no other creator. He is God forever God and is today your God it will solve your problem it says it just God it just God who is that somebody who promises and he does it somebody who told you to come near and you came near and he blesses you somebody who brings the joy and the happiness and the blessing of heaven upon you a just God who is not impartial who is not partial a God who will bless this and bless this and bless that and bless everyone that God is there tonight and it will do great unforgettable things in your life in Jesus name he said a savior that God saves this God it will save you tonight I said it will save you tonight he said there is none else beside me then look at verse 22 again it said look unto me that is don't look to idols don't look to your own self-effort or self-righteousness it says look unto me and be ye saved that word saved there means the solution to every problem that you have look unto me and be ye saved. Look unto me and be ye healed. Look unto me and be ye delivered. Look unto me and then come out of that problem and let a new life, eternal life, come unto you. Look unto me. Tonight, as you look unto the Lord, it will save you. It will heal you. It will deliver you. That yoke that bondage, it will set you free in Jesus' name. Look unto me and be saved. All the ends of the earth, everyone, all the ends of the earth here in Israel, Egypt, Lebanon, Arab world, America, South America, Canada, Europe, Spain, everywhere, Look unto him tonight, all the ends of the earth. Because it says, I am God. There is none else. That's the message I bring to you tonight. And the topic is the transforming power of Christ, our Savior. The transforming power of Christ, our Savior. Now, there are three things we're looking at. Number one, the transgressions. Number two, the transformation. Number three, the translation. Number one, the transgressions of weak, wounded sufferers. Many people are suffering in the world. They're weak, and there's no strength, and they cannot help themselves. Why? Our transgressions make us weak. Our iniquities make us weak. Our evil make us weak. That means the evil we have done. The evil we have planted. And the evil we had perpetrated. They actually wounded us more than wounding us any other person and because of that we suffer we're talking about what has produced the problem 
the pain, the sickness, the suffering that we all have as human beings today is a transgression that caused that. But number two, God is able. He will forgive you. Amen. It will transform your life. Amen. It will change your life. Amen. It will turn every bad thing, every negative thing around in your life. Because, number two, there is transformation for waking, willing seekers. As you come and you're seeking the Lord, and you say, I, I can't do that for myself. I can't save myself. I can't heal myself. I can't deliver myself. But it's a God in heaven. And he says, I shall come near unto him. And as I come near, that God will save me and transform my life. Tonight is that night. You're seeking the Lord. You have a willing heart. A submissive heart, and you say, Lord, my Savior, Lord, my healer, Lord, my deliverer, you are the one I seek. The transformation of waking and the seeking person, willing before the Lord. Transformation. Somebody shout, Transformation. Let me hear your voice. Transformation. As you wake up and you say, why am I the way I am? Why did I go the direction I've been going? I want a change. I want salvation. And you're willing to do what he calls you to do. Tonight is that night of salvation. Tonight is that night of total deliverance. And tonight is the night of your miracle. Number three is the translation into whitened worthy souls. It makes you worthy. He actually translates you, removes you, transports you from where you are. And it translates you and transports you to the highest level of your desire. You will do it. I said you will do it. Number one, transgression. Number two, transformation. Number three, translation. Let's look at number one here. Number one, the transgressions of the weak, wounded, sufferers. There's something in Proverbs chapter 13, looking at verse 2. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. The word of God says, transgressors, sinners, which all people are, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That the sinners are the sufferers. The sinners are the people that bring suffering upon themselves. It says the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. Look at verse 15 there. Verse 15 says, Good understanding giveth favor. As you hear the word of God, and you have good understanding, and then you yield and submit to the understanding of the word that you have. Then favor will come from heaven for you. Forgiveness, that's favor, will come from heaven for you. Freedom will come from heaven for you. Good understanding. Give it favor. Look at the other side of the coin. When you have a coin, that's head, there's tail. There's one side, there's the other side. Look at the other side of the coin. But... The way of transgressors is hard. The way of transgressors is blocked. The way of transgressors is rough. The way 
of transgressors is painful. The way of transgressors brings suffering. The way of transgressors is hard. As we look at our lives and we see the hardship we face, the suffering we have, the sicknesses we endure, and the contrary wind that blows against us. Why? Because of our transgression. Because of our evil. And wherever we labor on the face of the earth, anywhere there is transgression, and it's everywhere. Anywhere there is sinfulness, and it's everywhere. Everywhere there is evil doing, and it's everywhere because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And anywhere those sinful traits are, anywhere those evil things appear, there is suffering. That's why we need to clear up the transgression. We need to clear up the sinfulness. We need to clear up all the iniquity because that is what brings suffering into our lives. Look at Isaiah chapter 59. I'm reading from verse 1 there. Isaiah 59 verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. God hears. God's hands will lift you up. Why has it not happened? What is delaying the salvation, the healing, the deliverance? What is delaying the setting free of the captive? Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid a space from you that he will not hear. It's the iniquity. It's the evil. It's the evil thing that we have done. The sinful things we have done and the sinful life we have lived. That is what keeps away the salvation of the Lord, the healing of the Lord, the deliverance of the Lord, and the favor of the Lord away from us. But today, as you come, and you say, Lord, I'm turning around. Lord, I'm changing my ways. Lord, I quit all those evil things, and I want your forgiveness, your favor, your pardon, your salvation, salvation will come to you. Yes. Look at Psalm 51. I'm reading from verse 1. And see a man that knew that the suffering, the hardship, the heartache, and all the pressures destroying his life came as a result of his transgression. And he became weak. And he became wounded. And he started suffering. And his position in life could not prevent the suffering. Look at what he did. He said in Psalm 51 verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions because I know as long as those transgressions are there and you're looking at them and you're reading them and you number them against me the suffering will continue but I'm pleading that you blot out my transgressions and the Lord tonight that's what he will do for you I said that's what he will do for you but he owned up he didn't say it's somebody else's transgression, my father's transgression, my parents' transgression, society's transgression. That's what brought me to this. He said, no, my transgressions, as you honor, 
as you have said. And you know, this is the problem. The Lord will wipe away your transgression. And when the transgressions are gone, the suffering will go. The panic will go. The evil will go. And all the pressures, everything will go in Jesus' name. Look at verse 2 there. It says in verse 2, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. It says, once I bear the iniquity, I will carry the infirmity. And so what I'm asking of you, Lord, is to wash me is to cleanse me, is to purge me, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Tonight is that night. The Lord will do it. Look at verse, five, verse uh, 7. In verse 7, here he tells us, purge me with Aesop and I shall be clean. It will cleanse you up tonight. It will transform your life tonight. Purge me. Cleanse me. Wash me. And I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. Tonight is your night. Look at Hebrews chapter 9. Reading from verse 15, and for this cause, he, Christ, he, our Savior, is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, he died for us, died for you, died for me, died for everyone, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the false testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance as he calls you and you respond as he calls you and you repent as he calls you and you say yes lord here i am i turn away from all my sin i turn away from all my transgression and i come wholeheartedly with all my heart all my soul all my mind i come unto you and i'm asking that you forgive me he'll forgive you amen, amen. Yeah. as i'm asking that you cleanse me it will cleanse you yeah. as you are asking that it will turn your life around it will do it in jesus name yeah. Look at verse 27. It says in verse 27, As it is appointed unto men, once to die. Now we know death is common. And before the rapture, before the Lord comes in the air to catch and to take the children of God and the saints of God away, it's appointed unto men, once to die. But after this, the judgment, that means all the transgression, all the iniquities, all the evil, all the sinfulness that caused the suffering here on earth. If somebody does not repent and he continues in that sinfulness, in that transgression and in that evil in that iniquity until the end of time that he comes to die and he dies in sin without forgiveness he dies in sin without salvation it is appointed unto men wants to die but after this the judgment and in the suffering will continue until all eternity. That's why you are coming to the Lord today. I say that's why you are coming to the Lord today. And as you come, he'll forgive you. As you come, he'll take all the transgressions away. He will transform your life. Any amen over there? He'll transform your life. He'll take you. He'll forgive you. 
And when he forgives you, he sets you free. And all things will become different and change in your life in Jesus' name. What do we see in your life? What do we notice in your life? When that salvation has come. That leads me to point number two. It's the transformation of awakened and willing seekers. The transformation, the forgiveness that comes, the change of life that comes, the new life, eternal life that comes to you. Look at that, Isaiah chapter 1, reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now. It says, hurry up. It says, don't waste any time. It says, this is the time. The time of your salvation. The time of your renewal. The time of your forgiveness. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as college, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, dirty, evil, dangerous, red, danger. Red is what, you know, people use when uh, there is a possibility of open electric wire somewhere. And they pace not there, and they say, danger, with rage. What the Lord is saying is that your sins, your iniquities, don't they be red like crimson. He'll make them as white as snow. I lost an amen. Tonight is that night when the Lord will take all your transgression, when the Lord will take all your iniquity, when the Lord will take everything that has been wrong in your life and you confess and you forsake and you say, Lord, here am I, cleanse me, wash me, forgive me, the Lord will forgive you. It says, but there must be something, look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, if ye be willing. Are you willing to have eternal life? Are you willing to have forgiveness? Are you willing to have all your sins blotted out? If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Over here on earth, the Lord will take care of you. And then uh, with that salvation, with that transformation, with that change of life, when you die, you go to be in the presence of the Lord and you'll eat the good of that eternal everlasting land in Jesus' name. Sin brings suffering here and eternity. But repentance, salvation, new life, Forgiveness brings goodness here on earth and also in eternity. Amen. Amen. Let me show you some people that have done that. Acts chapter 19 and see how they turned away from their iniquities. See how they turned away from their sin. How the goodness of God is salvation in freedom. In forgiveness of the goodness of God in eternal life came unto them. Acts chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. They had magical instruments. They had occultic materials. And when they knew that iniquity, and they knew transgression, and they knew their evil will bring suffering upon them. They came and they believed in the Lord. And as they believed in the Lord, they confessed and everything was taken away. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, many of them also, which used 
curious acts, occultic acts, because they belong to different gangs and societies doing evil, they brought their books together and they burnt them before all men and they counted the price of them and found the age 50,000 pieces of silver. Their repentance was genuine. Their repentance actually brought them forgiveness from the Lord. As you repent tonight, forgiveness will come. Amen. Salvation will come. Amen. Eternal life will come. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 9. I've been talking about transgression, bringing suffering, sin, bringing suffering, iniquity, bringing suffering. What is transgression? What is sin? And what is that evil thing that brings all that into men's lives, women's lives? First Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Unrighteousness, what's that? That's the opposite of righteousness. Evil was that, that's the opposite of good. Iniquity was that, that's the opposite of innocence. If your lie shows, depicts, demonstrates the opposite of righteousness, the opposite of innocence, the opposite of honesty. If your life depicts the opposite of righteousness and holiness, that is the transgression. And the transgression brings sin and it brings suffering and it is repentance that brings forgiveness, redemption, salvation, eternal life. Know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. What do we do so that that salvation will come? What must be we, we be willing to do so that new life, eternal life will come? And look at verse 11. It says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed. He'll wash you tonight. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. As you come out of the transgression and you come out of the iniquity and you come out of the evil doing, the Lord will take you tonight. It will save you tonight. It will change your life tonight. It will transform your life tonight. In Revelation chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. That is, you've been uh, having Babylonish character. Babylonish behavior. Babylonish iniquity. Babylon, the picture of defilement and evil. And now you don't want the suffering here on earth. You don't want the suffering there in hell forever. There is one thing to do. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. That you receive not of her plagues. As you come, forgiveness is ready and forgiveness is waiting for you. Eternal life is waiting for you. The favor of God 
is waiting for you. And the grace of God for salvation, the grace of God for righteousness is waiting for you. It is yours tonight. What is he there? What is she there? It's coming your way. Salvation. Healing. Deliverance. Coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. Number three now. Number one, transgressions. Number two, transformation. A change of life. Number three is the translation. The translation into whitened and worthy souls. It'll make you worthy tonight. I said it'll make you worthy tonight. We're looking at Colossians chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Amen. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He takes you away from the kingdom of sin. From the kingdom of Satan. From the kingdom of darkness. From the kingdom of evil. As you stretch your hand to him. As you turn away from every form of sin, every form of transgression, every form of evil, and you say, here am I, Lord, save me, and I shall be saved. At that moment, which is tonight in your life, I say tonight in your life, it will take you out of that kingdom of darkness, out of that kingdom of sinfulness, out of that kingdom of evil, out of the kingdom of the sufferers who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's what forgiveness does in our lives. That's what favor from heaven does in our lives. That's what the power of the Savior, the power of the Redeemer. That is what it does in our lives. It delivers us from the power of darkness and he translates us into the kingdom of his dear son. Look at verse 14 there.